Well, I wish I could play this old guitar. I've been trying for a long, long time. All them old boys I started out with. Well, they're all playing just fun. But I can grab me a handful of eagles and drag it on over to the lake. But after me, it's beyond me how to take it any other place. I'm Tom, and uh, we're the Brit Brothers. We're the Brit Brothers, and that was a J.B. Lenore song, and uh, the uh, song you heard opening the show. It's gonna fall. Uh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the song that you heard uh, uh, opening the show was a song uh, written and sung by uh, Delbert McClinton, De the great <laughs> Delbert McClinton. I mean, who in the world? You know, I never thought we'd have Delbert singing our. Uh, theme song, but uh, Bob is a close friend and has worked with Delbert for years, and uh, Delbert said, uh, Bob called him up and said, hey, here's what we're doing, well, and yeah. Delbert said... Uh, I, I, I was telling him, you know, ex explaining, you know, we're going to kind of take off on the old car talk, and with click and clack, and do guitar talk with Bob and Tom, and, and just saying, you know, yeah, we, we're going to have to come up with some kind of theme song or something. Oh, I got your theme song. <laughs> And uh, he told me the words, and he said, yeah, I'll record it and send it to you. So, yeah, the, <laughs> and, uh, and it's perfect. So that was Delbert uh, doing the intro. And uh, We tried to get Stevie Wonder, but he was, uh, <laughs> he was unavailable. So, uh, but, but you worked with Delbert for how long? I've worked with Delbert for about 10 years. Uh, I uh, started working with him. I was... Uh, my wife and I were going on the cruise. Uh, the just, blues cruise. Yeah, he he's done a cruise now for it's over twenty five years. He's kind of the originator of the music. What's it cruise. called? The Sandy Sandy Beaches cruise. And uh, I think we've done twenty six or so. I, I'm not sure. I've been on the last ten of them, I guess. Uh, he invited Dad and I to go on, and uh, so we were going. Uh, just as guests, and then his guitar player at the time was Rob McNally, and uh, Rob called me about a month before the cruise, a month and a half before the cruise, and said, hey man, I got something popped up I can't go on, I really can't go on the cruise, would you f cover for me, could you fill in with Delbert and Leroy Parnell and uh, a couple other acts, I, geez, I can't even remember, uh, but uh, McCreary sisters. Uh, I said, "Yeah, I, I'm going to be there. I just just assume play." So I played, had a blast. It's the 
It's the most fun you can have in a week. It's unbelievable. It shows from noon to one o'clock in the morning, and then at one o'clock in the morning, the piano bar starts up, and people come in and sing, you know, old standards and uh, and jam sessions pop up all over the boat. There's a lot of great. Anson Funderburg's on Anson's there. Terry on, yeah. Nicholson, Al Anderson. The Mavericks are always on. Um, uh, yeah, I got stuck doing a cruise with Mott the Hoople <laughs> last year. So that's it for me. I'm not well, doing this anymore. Yeah. But anyway, I played and uh, had a great time. And uh, as it turned out, Rob uh, Rob stayed in town to do the first Lady A record. And, uh, and that he kind of trans formed into doing a lot of session work and so I then I just kind of took his spot in Delbert's band and great over, band too yeah oh it's badass yes, man you over, gotta you got see this band over the years uh we started writing together and uh done a couple of records uh, uh that I've co-written and produced uh the last one we just won the Grammy for best traditional blues album did you get your Grammy? I did. Really? Did you have to pay for it? No. You know, they wanted me to pay for it. When did you win a Grammy? I won a Grammy for the Vince Gill and Patty Lovis, both. You didn't actually win a Grammy. Well, I played on the record. Right. Yeah, you actually won a Grammy. Yeah, you get... I hate you. You can... <laughs> you get one of these. Well, maybe that's what they wanted to give me. And you do have to pay for that. You know, this is for Bob Yeah, they won like $280. And I said, ah, oh, man, it's no. not that big a deal to me. Oh no! You can get a, this is a certificate if you play on a record. Right. You can get one of these. This is for. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I never got yeah, it. Yeah, Bob Tillon's "Time Out of Mind," and so you can order. You can order these. Uh, uh, but the Grammy, no. If you actually won a Grammy, I won the Grammy for producing. Really. Okay. Uh, well, and also I was so te- got technically it. a band member because he named the record uh, Delbert McClinton and Self Made Man. Right. Made it a band. Uh, so. Uh, anyway, it's been a great, just amazing run playing with, uh, he's such a badass singer. He's the, I, I would say he's kind of like the Frank Sinatra of Texas blues. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's a good way to he's put just it. A, he's just a perfect singer, yeah. man. Yeah. He doesn't overdo it. He doesn't underdo it. He's just, mm-hmm. you know, that's why everybody loves him. I mean, he worked with the Beatles. You know, that's right. Bonnie Raitt. Years ago, he did. Uh, uh, there was a record, uh, "Hey Baby," Bruce Chanel. Yeah. And he played the harmonica on it. Was in, you know, you know, we should just have Delbert on. We should. And we should. We can talk about all that. Kind yeah, of stuff. yeah. We'll save that for, for but, later. Yeah, yeah. We'll get Delbert on here yeah. and, uh, and have a chat with him. Hey, why don't we just talk about uh, what got us started, how we started out, and let's do it. That's a good, but, good way to go. This show may go. This is the uh, uh, our Virgin show, so it may it may go a little bit longer because we have a lot of things we want to uh, tell you about ourselves and and everything. So let's do that. Okay. So anyway, we were talking about our first guitars um, and when we started playing guitar. And I came, to, I think we started playing guitar in uh, Sioux City, Iowa. I thought it was Cedar Rapids, but you're probably right. I think I'm right on that. Uh, because I started at the age of 10, and I was certainly in Sioux City, which means you would have been the age of five. Yeah. Uh, so, and you say you started five, around five seven. Six. I started when I was around seven. And your first guitar was? <laughs> My first guitar <laughs> was... Uh, it was from Sears and Roebuck, and it was a pressed metal, you know, it was electric guitar, I, I suppose, but, you know, it was about an inch and a half thick. Was it, it aluminum? I don't know what it was made out of, but it was, you know, it was a piece of crap, and, you know, got it for Christmas from Mom and Dad. And, well, they gave me a much nicer guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I got a, a Greco. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. Chocolate brown. It was like a uh, Japanese version of a sort of a 335, I guess. It was playable. Was yeah. your uh, aluminum guitar playable? I don't. I don't recall. Where the hell would they have found that? <laughs> Sears and Roebuck. They just. Oh, they went downtown to Sears and Roebuck. I guess. You didn't order it, right? 
Did you or, could you order? Yeah, you could order things. I guess you could, but I've never heard of a metal Sears or Roebuck. Yeah, so. uh, my first wood guitar was an acoustic guitar, and it was a twelve string. What was it? I have no idea. Yeah, I I painted it. I painted like a some kind of sunset on it. But, yeah, and just you know, I had twelve strings on it for a while, and then I got rid of six of them. And Good idea. It was, <laughs> and it still sucked. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it sucked too. Fine. Yeah, I went from the Greco um, to a Martin D eighteen. I decided to switch. I, I didn't play wow. electric for a long time. I saved my money up and bought a, a D eighteen. I, I remember that guitar for three hundred dollars, um, and didn't go back to electric until I was around eighteen years old or so. And I started playing electric. Yeah. You know. But I had, uh, uh, where'd we move then after Cincinnati, Ohio? Cincinnati. We were there for like a year and a half. Yep. Yeah. I don't even remember it being that long. And then we went to the incredibly was in stunningly Pittsburgh. beautiful city of Evansville, Indiana. <laughs> yes. Man, that place was happening. Yeah. Well, you met John Cowan there. Yeah, I did meet John Cowan there uh, from Newgrass Revival and Leon Russell. We've all played with Leon Russell. Bob played with Leon. I played with Leon. John got me the gig with John and Sam Bush got me the gig with Leon. And, and uh, Liz, John's wife, called yeah. me. I was in Mexico playing with an Elvis impersonator That's to, right. to come and audition for Leon. That's right. When Newgrass was leaving. And he wanted to put a rock band. Had they already left when you came in? They, they left, right? Yeah, I th yeah. And then we I went to the fourteen p or twelve piece band or something huge. like that. And uh, um, two drummers. And Leon wanted you and I to wear matching outfits, <laughs> <laughs> which our mom would buy every Christmas. We got our mom would. We told him so. Well, we'll wait for our mom to send our matching outfits, which she does every Christmas anyway. So. Yeah. <laughs> And I think we had got fleece line vests. Yes. And he didn't like those. Those, those, so, were, those were pretty special. Yeah, so. <laughs> so anyway, so we went to Cincinnati briefly, Evansville, Indiana for, God, how long did we live there? Five years, right? Well, <clears throat> I went through my junior year of high school. Okay. And then we moved to uh, California, to Bay Area. I don't think you came with us. I didn't. I, I had already moved out of the house, and I went to Louisville, Kentucky with John Cowan, and we were playing in bands in Louisville, and that's when I got exposed to uh, the bluegrass scene. Where at that time, uh, Louisville and Lexington, Kentucky were the meccas of all the great blue, bluegrass players. And so I got to uh, hear all those guys, uh, Matt Sam Bush and... Tony Rice and Ricky Skaggs and Ben Skill and all these people that were living there at the time. So that was real good. But you guys, uh, uh, you and Mom and Dad uh, went to uh, San Mateo. San Mateo, yeah. yeah. And, Lived in San Mateo and Foster City, all on the peninsula. And then you started playing with an Elvis impersonator, correct? At, at some point, yeah. Well, no, actually, I came to San Francisco I was there, for a little You did while. live there for a little bit. I was playing pedal steel and I came out and I played with uh, Billy C. Farlow from Commander Cardi. Right. I did a gig with Billy C. Farlow in, in Half Moon Bay one time, and uh, mine was Pataluma. Uh, Billy. Uh, Billy Lewis. Billy Lewis. Billy Lee Lewis. Playing drums from yeah. Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah, yeah. He's the one who called me out there to do that, and I ended up hating it out there because you had to drive uh, uh, four hours to a gig to play for the door, which was ten bucks. Yeah. So I said, man, this is, you know, I didn't last long there at all. And that, that's when I uh, went to Nashville. Yeah. So. I, I played with, I played in, you know, I played in some club bands doing Top 40. I had a original jazz fusion band. I remember Mom, uh, yeah, I remember Mom it telling me about that. It was called Savannah Hayes. Savannah Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a porn star. <laughs> 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 Yeah, if you want to, folks, if you want to make a living doing music, you got to go where the music is. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes you think a big city is where the music is, and it's yeah. not always the case. So I came to, at the time, Nashville was very small uh, compared to what it is now. But everybody was here, and you could be a working musician. So I said, that's fine yeah. with me. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. I played pedal steel and electric guitar and got work right off the bat. And you know who brought me here was Hoot Esther. 
Wow. Our late friend, Hood Hester, mm -hmm. uh, was, uh, I was living in Louisville, Kentucky at the time. Hoot was there. He would come sit in with the bluegrass band I was playing in. And uh, he said, man, you need to go to Nashville. I've been going to Nashville. You need to come down. So Hoot talked me into it, and he got me in the union. And thank you, Hoot. When, well, I, so I moved here. I got the call from John's wife and moved here in 81. I came in an audition for Leon, and I remember you telling me, said, okay, well, you just need to play like Freddie King, because he loves Freddie <laughs> King. <laughs> because I couldn't play like Freddie King. <laughs> and, uh, right, here's what you need to do, Bob. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't like me because I don't play like <laughs> Freddie King. So that's all So that's all I listened to yeah. until I got here was Freddie King. And uh, I flew here and uh, played for him, and he said, yeah. And so I flew back out to San Francisco and loaded up my 72. Two Nova, Nova with whatever I could fit in it. I had a 75 Gremlin. I remember that. <laughs> we toured in it. Yes, we did. <laughs> that was a badass car, man. Uh, yeah, I stopped in, I think I drove, I drove to Oklahoma City from there and stayed at Ronnie Dunn's house. Uh, uh, he still lived there. Was it, had I been working with Ronnie yeah. at the time? and that's how... That's how I came to stay there. Cause you're, ah, you're, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Before but, before Brooks and Dunn, before he Yeah, uh, but, but Liam was living in Hendersonville. Yeah. And you just stayed at Liam's house. Yeah. Or, 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 or I had an apartment. I think you came. No, I, I don't remember. I, I lived at Liam's house for two or th first two or three years. I yeah. lived on his houseboat. And that's where you me. learned uh, how to uh, engineer? Yeah. Learned to engineer there. What do you have an old MCI board or something in there? No. It wasn't even that, right? What it was, was it? API. Oh, he had an API in there? There was an API in the I truck. Didn't know that. Wow. Uh, and a, uh, a Harrison in the bus. Mm hmm. Uh, there was a Helios, this big wraparound yeah. Helios, but it was never hooked up. Um, well, a lot of that stuff came when I got with him. He was still living in L.A. and he, he owned the uh, he had the uh, video studio out there, and so he had all this uh, vintage, worthless video gear that he had to sell. Right. And, yeah, he had a whole video bus. Yeah, for remote. Well, that's where TV I did shows. the Hank Wilson uh, Volume Two record, or I did the overdubs on. We we did it. We recorded it here at RCA, and with all the old A team. Uh, Henry Strelacki and all, all those people, and uh, oh, what's his name, uh, old president, of the union, Harold Bradley. Harold Bradley. Yeah. Um, and then took it out to L.A. to that uh, video bus and uh, s sat on that bus, sweating our asses off. Sam Bush and John Connor. Well, no, you would have. That would have been the audio bus. There was well, a video bus was, and an audio bus. Yeah, probably was the audio. Bus. The audio bus had the Harrison console, which okay. I, I never thought sounded worth a crap. No. I mean, compared to. The yeah, API, yeah. yeah. Where was our first? What was your first gig with Leon? Do you remember? Yeah, the Agora Ballroom in Atlanta. I remember vividly because I remember. And who all was in the band? Butch McDade. Butch McDade. Me. Yeah. And the uh, uh, girl singers. We had. Didn't we have two drummers? To start. No, it wasn't Butch. No, it was. Uh, oh, Buster Phillips. Buster Phillips. Oh my God. Yeah. Boy, Buster was a good yeah. drummer. Yeah. Uh, Jack Wessel, you, Juke Logan, God rest his soul. Yeah, God rest a lot of these people's yeah. souls. Uh, let's see. We had, and then God, we had, we're old. We had Jack, who's Leon's cousin, playing sax. He, he played keyboards, and then. But he was too jazzy for Leon. Yeah, and then there was uh, his a friend. trombone player. Yeah. yeah. Uh, God, man. And we had, oh, uh, Jonathan Yudkin yeah. uh, playing fiddle, but don't, if, according to him, it's, no, I don't it's play the fiddle. violin. I play violin. Yeah. Uh, well, he's right about that. Well, yeah. Actually, yeah. you know. Yeah, he didn't play. He, he tried to, he would play uh, uh, like Sally Gooden on the fiddle, and it would sound like Etoff Perelman right. was playing, <laughs> trying to play right. Sally Gooden. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was an amazing band and four background singers. Mm -hmm. Donna, Marsha, Pebble. Who am I missing? Oh, Jack's wife, uh, Trudy. Trudy. Yeah. Trudy, yes. Now, how many of them are, are still alive? Uh, only t two of them. 
Yeah, Trudy is still alive, and Donna, I don't know. Donna. Uh, Marsha passed away first, I think. Well, Donna was a, uh, she was a uh, Pentecostal from South Mississippi, and she would do this dance routine on stage, and she would do this thing where she fell out. And she would fall that. down and start kicking, and then Juke <laughs> would go over and put a napkin over her, uh, over her face, and Leon loved it. He'd be over there playing. See, I don't remember that. Yeah, I don't yeah. remember a lot of stuff. Yeah, well, there's a lot of stuff I'd rather not remember about that. But anyway, uh, so, okay, so anyway, so uh, between the two of us, we have been in Nashville for a total of 90 years, <laughs> right? <laughs> 45 and 45. Yeah. Well, I've been here 40, almost 40. Yeah, I've been here 40. You've been here 70. Yeah, so feels like it. Yeah. So, but I mean, I got, you know, back then I got work right out of the gate. It was good. And, and you had a gig waiting for you. So yeah. It was good, but it's different nowadays. You know, if, I, if, I, if, if some kid was wanting to move here, of course, this is the COVID days. Yeah. Uh, I, I wouldn't know what to tell them. I mean, you can't say go to the union, join I'm, the union, and you'll get a gig anymore. Well, the union doesn't get you gigs. I, I, well, but if, back then, they had that board up down there, you know, and oh, I actually yeah, did right. get gigs yeah. by looking at the board, but you had to be a member to look at the board. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was fortunate. I already had a gig. I, I wouldn't know what to tell somebody coming here uh, other than you just got to you got to blow get out away. You, you just got to be just badass gotta blow, yeah you got to be a badass and player. you got to get out there and people have to hear you and and it's all word of mouth there's that's what it boils down to is word of mouth and there's broadway now broadway when i got here there were only two clubs that had bands in it now there's i think the last time i was down there there were 14 clubs with bands in it wow um, I don't go down there. Well, I don't either, but I went I went down there one night just to see what was going on. And, uh, I took a friend down there. And there were, I counted 14 bars with live music. And it's a great place to cut your teeth if you're a young musician and you want to move here and get a gig. If, if you're a, Make country, a little money. country musician. Or, you well, know, yeah, but I don't part. know if it's even country anymore. But well, I mean, no. if you're a a really good traditional country uh, guitar player, you're going to work down there for yeah. sure. But you can also be a rock player and, yeah. and work down there. I mean, yeah. you can almost be like Eddie Van Halen and work down yeah. there yeah. anymore. So a note to all you young musicians wanting to move to Nashville, there is not just one type of music here. Mm -hmm. There are many types of music here. There's even a good rap scene and stuff like that. So Soul music. There's yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, Americana, for sure. Well, actually, pull this guitar out. This one? Yeah. Let's let's give the story on this. This is a historical guitar. It's uh, older than I am. It's older than I my was brother. born in '58. This is born in '56. The strap that I bought in, I was playing with Leon. Uh, you bought it at Cotton Music, didn't no, you? No, no, I was playing with Leon, living at his house, and uh, I bought it. It was I think May of '85. Uh, I have the receipt somewhere from the guy. I bought it. I got up went to breakfast at this little restaurant in Hendersonville and uh, on my way I thought well I'm gonna grab a newspaper so I went to the little grocery store with the newspaper stands out front and uh, got the Nashville paper and there was a Gallatin newspaper. Gallatin's another town little small really small town uh, 15 miles 10 miles from Hendersonville mm -hmm. So I'm, I had ordered my breakfast and I'm looking through the Gallatin wine ads and in the, no, it was in the, yeah, in the Gallatin wine ads, uh, 1956 Stratocaster, uh, $1,600. And I got up and went, found, went to a payphone and uh, called the number and he was less than five minutes away and I ate and went over there and he was a guy, he was getting into the video business and needed to buy an Ikigami camera, mm -hmm. which is some high-end right. camera. And uh, I said, yeah, I, lo I love it. Uh, I'd like to take it and play it through my rig and see how it sounds. And he said, yeah, go ahead. I said, well, you want to come with me? No, I trust you. And, uh, so he just got, took it out to Leon's, he had a warehouse with studios in it. I remember it. I took it out there, played it, and just went, holy crap. And uh, so I went back and I said, well, 
I can give you eight hundred dollars now, and and I'll give you the other eight hundred in a week if you can hold on to it for me. He says, "No, I, I trust you. Just uh, you can give me whatever you want and take it. Just take it and bring me the rest." You know, some people are like that. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so I did, and uh, it's been uh, it's an amazing guitar. Uh, yeah, but there's another history to this. Guitar. Oh, the other history is. Uh, Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix, right. Remember him? So this guitar, <laughs> who was who was the guy that he was a he was a Fender artist and he helped Leo in the early days with the design of the Stratocaster. Oh that's a question for Webb. You'll uh, know that. Well I But I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. He was he was a big artist back then and he and he helped with the Stratocaster. Right. And this was his guitar, and Jimi Hendrix was stationed Fort at, Campbell, at, Kentucky. Fort, Fort Campbell, and he used to come to Nashville to play, and he'd borrow guitars. Played at Printer's Alley. Yeah, and he'd borrow guitars, and this was one of the guitars that he used to borrow. He borrowed from oh. that guy. Uh, so Jimmy's played this. Uh, and don't you have some signatures on there? I do. Uh, I had. Uh, well, you got Eric Clapton. I had Eric Clapton. Eric Clapton came and sat in with Leon. Right. Uh, we played. We're playing. And Jesse Ed Davis sat in. At Jesse Ed always. <clears throat> whenever we were in L.A. with uh, Leon, Jesse came out to most every gig and sat in with us. Right. Uh, and uh, we became friends. And he uh, he came out. Let me see this. He came out the. F we played two nights at Trancas, and uh, he came out the first night. And uh, no, JJ Kale. Yeah, came out, and uh, and Jesse and we were just sitting around, and I and I said, man, why don't you bring a guitar tomorrow, Kale, and you know sit in with us? And uh, he goes, well, yeah, okay. So anyway, the next night came around, and uh, Jesse and I were backstage stringing, putting uh, restringing, and. Uh, uh, He's, he got up to go to the bathroom. The only bathroom, there was no bathroom backstage. You had to go out into the club. So I went out in the club and I'm walking to the bathroom. I look over at the bar and there's Jesse, Kale, and Clapton at the bar. And so I went and peed and then went over and walked up and Kale said, uh, well, Bob, man, I'm, I didn't bring a guitar, but I brought my buddy here. You know, maybe you could talk him into playing. <laughs> so, so, uh, we did the show, we played about five songs, and after every song, Liam's going, it's guitar night, it's guitar <laughs> night. <laughs> and uh, finally, uh, he called Clapton up, and, and Jesse, and both Jesse and Clapton got up and played, and uh, so Eric played that. And At he signed time, it back here. Yeah, and I had him sign it. Uh, but there's another signature on here, Bob. There's another signature <laughs> right over top of it. Right. Is, uh, that, so you can't really tell. It looks like yeah, Chinese. Yeah, it's, it's all wearing away. I, I, you know. Yeah, put some varnish on it. Uh, no, I, I thought about that, and uh, uh, Glazer said, nah, you don't want to do that. Yeah. So, uh, so years later, I'm playing in Central Park at this uh, Cheryl Crow thing, and... Uh, there was a rehearsal night, dress rehearsal night, and I'm backstage, and I hear "Happy" kick off, and and I had no idea, but Keith was there. Yeah, and it's unmistakable. The first two chords, mm -hmm. you know, it's Keith, and uh, so later on, I was just sitting around, and he was back there, and so I took that guitar over to him, and uh, I, I said. Uh, Hey, hey, man. Well, first we talked about some shit, you know, because he comes to Nashville from time to time. And yeah, he, yeah, he and works he stays at George at, Jones. Yeah, and, and, he, and when he comes here, he stays at J.I. Allison's place, which is out in the country, not uh -huh. far from where we are now. Uh, and uh, heard a lot of great stories about his uh, times <laughs> there. So I started talking to him about J.I., and then I, I pulled this out of the case and gig bag, and I said, Man, would you mind signing this? And I'm holding it up going, yeah, you know, would you mind signing this? And Clapton's up here and he just grabbed it out of my hands. So I'm like, oh, 99. 
And signs overclocked him. So it was in 1990. Well, did those guys not like each other? Is that why he did that? Or did, or, or <laughs> I think they do like well, each other. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, they, you know. Or was he just being an asshole? Yeah, I think he, a little cantankerous. A little bit of that. You know, yeah. uh, I do remember, you know, they're rehearsing and both, you know, doing like the finale or something. And Eric was over stage right, sitting on his amp playing and... And Keith came over and sat down next to him. Eric kind of got up, moved over a little bit. This <laughs> could have been a certain. Keith is older. Old, yes, he's he very, very uh, odiferous. Yes, very odiferous. <laughs> okay. uh, but uh, yeah, so that's uh, the story of, of this guitar. It's, uh, it's boy, a, man. This I got to tell people how uh, uh, there really is a difference to me. I mean, you can't find a, a, a get a new Fender guitar that feels like this that has a neck like this. You just can't, they just don't make them. Yeah. Sorry. Everybody goes, no, nah, new Fenders are okay. Yeah. I said, yeah. Wait, wait, wait till you play this. Yeah. I remember one time, uh, Buk Bukovac sat in with. Uh, I don't know who I was playing with. Speaking of Tom Bukovac. Yeah, but he. Uh, he came up and said, and he played this guitar and said, "What do you want to? What do you want to do?" I said, "I don't care. Just play something in B. It's B is his favorite key." Yeah, I know. And, That's uh, true. Uh, so we did. And about halfway through, and he goes, "Holy shit! I've never played a strat I like. This thing, this is fucking unbelievable." <laughs> so it, it's 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 a it's alive. You know, it's pretty amazing guitar. Yeah. What time is it, boys? It's time for a smoke break for Tom. <laughs> I still smoke. Sorry, folks. I'm 67 and I well, still smoke. We'll resume. Like an idiot. Sounds like it. <laughs> okay, so we were uh, uh, talking about you coming to Nashville. I came a few years earlier. I think I came here around 74, and I got a. Uh, my first gig was with a girl named. Uh, and I had it within like one day, I, word of mouth kind of thing. Uh, uh, Randy Gurley was her name, and she was signed to ABC Records, and, and she had a tour with the opening up for the Oak Ridge Boys, and they were like huge stars at the time. So I got on this tour, and that was uh, you know my trial by fire to going on the road on a tour bus. And it was... Uh, uh, it was not what I thought. Uh, mm. It was pretty uh, uh, decadent, uh, to say the least. I didn't expect that kind of debauchery. And I uh, thought that I was getting into on a bus with a bunch of guys that really liked playing music. <laughs> but uh, no, they, they were there for the party. You know? Oh, boy. As were most of the artists during that era I worked for. They were there for the party. Music was just kind of this unfortunate thing that they had to do to keep the party going. <laughs> so uh, I went through that phase. I can't remember who all I worked with back then, you know. But then I worked with, well, no, I mean, then uh, I think then no, the next gig I got was the Leon gig. But then after the Leon gig, I went back to country music. I worked with Ronnie Dunn for a while, and then Donnie West. I think I did Donnie oh, West. Right. App? Did I do? I I can't remember. But I played pedal steel on electric guitar for her. And uh, that whole world gig was uh, full of decadence and debauchery also. Uh, but there were a couple guys in the band that were in it for the music. So I kind of latched on to that for a while. Kenny Penny? Kenny Penny, yeah. Kenny Penny was Kenny in it. Oh, he was just a character, man. Yeah. Uh, he's the guy that... I didn't say Kenny Penny, but... Yeah, well, who were you thinking? Pete Finney. No, Pete Finney was in Patty Loveless. Oh, that's right. This is way before. Yeah. This is like yeah. this is like uh, 1983 or something like that. I'm with Donnie West, but this guy Kenny Penny was there. He's the guy that told the uh, uh, we were playing this fair in Florida, and uh, the guy that owned the fair and managed it was also a clown at the fair, and he saw Kenny drinking a beer on the side of the stage, and he came running up. And he had half of his clown outfit on. He didn't have the whole clown outfit on. He didn't have his nose or anything yet. He goes, you can't drink here. And Kenny turned around to him and said, fuck off, bozo. <laughs> so, 
Kenny Penny was quite the character, <laughs> but a great player, man. <laughs> Played uh, fiddle and uh, electric guitar. He was <laughs> really good. He could do like Paganini stuff on the electric guitar. Wow. So unbelievable. Uh, but there was, at the time, there was no call for Paganini <laughs> in Nashville. <laughs> so. so anyway, after that, um, boo, 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 what did I do? What, did you, what were you doing in the 80s? Uh, no, I left Leon and you stayed with Leon. I stayed with Leon. I played with him for 10 years. and uh, Was it that long? Yeah. Uh, and uh, Edgar Winter was in the band for three of those That's years. That's right. That's right. And we did uh, combination, you know, both of their catalog. Uh, Frankenstein. Frankenstein, you know, all that all stuff. All Leon stuff. All Leon stuff. And that came about because Edgar opened up a show for Leon one night, and uh, Leon invited him out to play. Uh, he said, hey, why don't you come and play, uh, I do Over the Rainbow, why don't you come and play, sax, play a sax solo on it? So he did. And then after the, after the show, he said, man, you want to, would you want to join our band? Do a cold <laughs> bill. Yeah. Yeah. So he did, and we did it for... Three, at least three years. Uh, and it was awesome. It was great. Well, Edgar was quite the card player, if I remember. We played spades all the time. It was always Leon and Edgar and me and Herb Schuker. Uh -huh. uh, we were the spade players. And, uh, uh, you know, Edgar, Edgar and Johnny, they can't see very well. Or so they say. So they say. That's what I was, <laughs> that's what I was going to say. But it, no, it's true. But yeah. He, uh, you know, if he's reading, has to read something. He's he he's has to like, get really he, close. He's like this, you yeah. know. And yeah. but and so he holds his cards up there. But I swear, if if card fell on the floor, he he could He'd tell know what, what it he was. Could he could smell the number. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, that that was great. And there's actually a video was shot in Murfreesboro years ago during that period. Uh, and it's sold as an Edgar Winter show. I don't know why, but you can find it. Uh, so that was in the, that was probably 87-ish. So you were there for 10 years. Yeah. Where'd you go after that? Uh, Back to country music land? My first country music gig was Lionel Cartwright. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, and then you did, worked with Pam Tillis. I worked with Pam twice. Yeah. Uh, I, I I worked with her once. Yeah. Did a session with her once. Yeah. And uh, worked with Pam. You were working with Patty. I worked with a bunch of people. I don't know that I can remember them all. Uh, I did well. The uh, Winona, the Judds, right? Uh, Dixie Chicks. Um, Weren't you their band leader? Yeah, I was the MD. Um, How long was that? That was three years, two or three, maybe three, two or was three it years. Was that first big tour? Yeah, well, I started before that. The big, the, I started right before they broke. Uh, when that big well, see, they used to, out. you know, when I played with uh, Patty, they used to open up uh, for Patty Loveless. Yeah. You know, and like the crowd, we, we were going, what's going on here, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, and they said, it's the opening act, it's not you, mm -hmm. it's the Dixie Chicks. And they were like, wow, this is, this is definitely going somewhere. Yeah. The big, the huge tour, the first huge tour was the Fly Tour, and that was in 2000. And yeah, that was the, you know, arena tour. Right. Uh, and uh, then uh, after that, I left right before the trip to... Uh, England when uh, Natalie made the comment about they're embarrassed they're from Texas. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and, and then, then all, they got yanked from the, the radio. All the shit happened, yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, after that, I think after that was Winona. Uh, and that was interesting. The Winona gig. Uh, I wasn't looking for a gig, but Bukovac called. Bukovac was playing. Well, he playing. had been playing with her. Yeah. And, and Willie Weeks was playing bass. And Willie, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so Book called me and he said, you know, man, why not us looking for a guitar player? And we've been auditioning. I've spent the whole day. We listened to 
eight, ten guitar players, and none of them are worth a shit. He set a time. He said, I'll just show you a song or two out in the hallway. And and so I did, and uh, and then they, they offered me the gig right after I played. Yep. So I did that for, I don't know how long, a few years, a mm -hmm. couple, couple of years. And then I went and played with uh, John Fogarty. Mm -hmm. Played with him for three years, I guess. I remember I came to see you guys, and uh, Willie Nelson was helping it out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we did a, we I did a summer with Willie. With yeah. That was, that really was cool. great fun. Man, I got to tell you, though, I sat out front in the audience, and that was the loudest thing I've ever heard in my life. Which? John? Yeah. Yeah. Good uh, Lord. Of course, I mean, that's, I mean, that's the out front guys. You know, yeah. That's not you guys necessarily right. on stage. Well, his guitar, is, he plays loud uh, as yeah. shit. Well, out front, man, it was like I, I almost... Even being a musician, I, I just yeah. was like, man, I got to bail. I and gotta... I think, yeah, and then that may be a byproduct of how loud his amp is. You got to get. Yeah, you got to match everything. Uh, but it couldn't have been that loud. It's loud. You, I, you, I would go nowhere. Like Hank Jr. Cannons. loud? <laughs> no, pretty close. Leon Piano yeah. loud? I played through Hank's rig one day. Oh, God. We, I was playing with Leon, and we did a gig with Hank, and it was in v Vegas. Out behind Caesar's Palace, and uh, I went out there. They were setting up, and uh, tech guy from here in town was his tech. Uh, I can't I can't remember anybody's names anymore, but uh, he said, "Man, you need to play through uh, Hank's rig." Isn't that <laughs> Marshalls? It was Mesa Boogie power amps. These three hundred watt power amps <laughs> with. Uh, Something, I don't know, there were like four of them. And, you know, two full stacks of 412 cabs. And, and, Not really and, a and valid he, and he had No, and he had it on a <laughs> potentiometer so that, you know, Hank would turn it up as loud as he could. But it, Hillbilly so, engineering. <laughs> yeah. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, he'd, and he'd always yell back, it needs to be louder. And, <laughs> <laughs> and Derek Phillips, is, that's why so Derek go Phillips back and, plays so loud, <laughs> the drummer. <laughs> yeah. Who's the greatest drummer oh, in yeah. town, man? I work with him. He's like, boom, bam. Yeah. Because yeah. he works with uh, Hank. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that was loud. Uh, but uh, getting back to uh, Fogarty, it was uh, it was loud. It was a lot of fun. The catalog, I mean, yeah, it was unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, the the song list. Yeah. It's like you you knew every song. Yeah. You know, and uh, and the drummer. Uh, Kenny. Yeah. Yeah. It's Kenny, always fun to work with him. Kenny's a blast. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> he's, I know. I've worked with him. <laughs> he's, on, he's on 12 all the time. He is on 12, man. <laughs> Just sitting no, around. There is know. no inner dialogue. No. <laughs> uh, In his playing either, you know, his playing is so good. It just makes you play better, you know, and yeah. especially, I mean, he's like uh, uh, perfect for yeah. Fogarty. Well, you know, John likes... Uh, he likes things on top. He likes the drums to push you, yeah. Which is counter, per, you know, intuitive for most drummers. You know. Well, and Leon me, was that way too. And I, you know, I like drums on the backside, and uh, or at least to feel that way. And yeah. uh, I remember when Kenny came in uh, to rehearsals, and he came in, and uh, the first uh, after John Molo was the drummer the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, he. Uh, uh, for about a year, maybe. And then Kenny came in, and I remember at rehearsals, Kenny sat down and played, and it was just like, oh, finally, you know, because Kenny was laying it back on the backside. Yeah, but then John made and it. And then John was like, no, you you got to push me, you know, and then it, it's just the way John likes it. Yeah. And, it. and it makes it exciting, and, you know, that's uh, his thing. And so... Uh, Anyway, I did that for a few years, and then I left. I quit that, and I went back to Winona and did that for, and the Judds. Isn't that a uh, Bob Dylan song? Back to Winona. Back to Winona, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Who, now you're playing with Bob Dylan. And now uh, I play with Bob Dylan. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, Good gig. Yeah, it's a great gig. It's a 
perfect gig for uh, uh, COVID nineteen. When you <laughs> now you can't even play. It's like you get this great gig. Yeah. And it's unfortunate, but it's a you know a blessing in disguise because I'm home. My, you know, my wife has breast cancer, yeah. and uh, uh, so I'm able to be here. Right. You know, and not have to. You know, quit that gig. Right. And, you know, right. so I'm, yeah. I'm I'm thankful in a way. Yeah. For the, yeah, that this I, is going I, on. I guess we're all surviving. You know, or, or, or you and I are fortunate. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of musicians out there that man. Oh, crew guys. Oh, the crew the, people, the, man. The, crew, the lighting, the lighting, stage people, sound companies, the people who work at the venues. They've been devastated. Yeah, so. it's it's awful. Um, but uh, you know, I try to look. I try to find the good in things when I can. Well, if you're fortunate, you can find the good in things. Yeah. But the, like I said, there's a lot of people that uh, are not fortunate. Anyway, we're bringing our audience down here. Yeah. I think now. <laughs> So that, that that was the '90s and the early 2000s for you. The '90s for me was uh, I kind you know I was kind of getting into this uh, Sonny Landers style of playing mm -hmm. and uh, not realizing that uh, this guy Sonny Landers existed. You know, and, Sonny, and Rye, huh? And Rye well, Rye. yeah, and Rye. Well, that's that's yeah. a whole other thing. I mean, that's that's my uh, that's he's been my teacher my whole life, yeah. pretty much. But. Uh, so I ended up getting this gig, uh, for Tom Cochran up in uh, Canada, Canadian guy, tour, yeah. and uh, Sue Medley, Canadian guy. Life is a highway. Uh -huh. He did that. Oh man, I remember the first time I heard that song. Well, that I was, was his driving version. Leon's yeah, bus yeah. Yeah. down the highway, and it was probably one in the morning, and I had the radio on, and that came on, yeah. and I just went, "Who the fuck is that?" Yeah. <laughs> well, it was really cool. I don't know how he is, but yeah. Man. I shall say nothing bad about anyone. Uh, after that, uh, I was just working in town, just doing my whole new style of playing, you know, that I loved and uh, didn't want to go out with anybody. Uh, you know, I, I always said the only uh, a person I would go out with right now would be Vince Gill or Patty Lovis, mm -hmm. and sure enough, Patty Lovis calls, and I went out with her. And we opened for Vince, and then Vince hired me out of that, and I've been with Vince for the past, or for up until two uh, until I got cancer, uh, for 18 years. Mm -hmm. so, and now it's all over, and I'm done. Yeah. yeah. And now we've, I'm doing a, a fucking podcast. Uh, we've both had cancer. <laughs> yeah, we've both had cancer. Yeah. So, But that's going to be on our cancer talk show <laughs> right, that we'll right, have right. on another day. Right. Cancer talk. So no, no cancer questions. <laughs> Just Thank guitar you. questions. Just and, guitar questions. And, and you need to send in some questions. And, uh, yeah, let's point that out. We have some, but, uh, uh, you know, I think we've covered a, a few of them already and just talking about it. And, you know, this is kind of our introductory show, so we're trying to let everybody know what, who we are, what we've done. Uh, and uh, I think the plan is for us to probably have a, a special guest on a regular basis as far as you know what what the show hopefully will turn into mm -hmm. uh and we'll take phone calls or make phone calls uh we have a special segment some special segments Our that legal, will come up we with. have a legal department we do we have a legal department headed up by the one and only web wilder that's right yeah. and it's uh l-a-w law law let's ask web if it's legal yeah so maybe we there'll should. be guitar related questions in other words is it legal to put a stratocaster neck on a telecaster body yes it is mm -hmm. right. uh but webb will he'll actually tell you whether or not you can go to jail for this kind of crap or not <laughs> yeah. hey bob it's just mr wilder uh, is this our legal department <laughs> yes <laughs> I think we have a question or two for you there. All right. First of all, uh, we should uh, explain uh, what what are your qualifications for? Uh, My qualifications are um, incurable guitar nerdism. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Followed by decades of guitar ownership. <laughs> Some good choices and bad choices, right? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> 
What were some of your worst choices, Webb? Oh, in acquiring guitars? You yes. Mean? Well, oh, God, now you're going to put me through it. You're going <laughs> to make me relive the Well, pick your top horror. three. <laughs> uh, I'm when sure I, there's well, dozens. Of, Share the pain. <laughs> yeah. I sold my my all original with original case sixty nine Strat to pay the rent. I don't know if that's a bad choice. You got to pay the rent yeah. for four hundred dollars in about nineteen eighty two or three when it was worth about five hundred dollars, and now that's a twelve thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, that was a bad choice for. Uh, yeah. Wow. I had and no idea they're worth stuff. that much now. Yeah, they are. Nine to twelve, I guess, depending on condition. You know, it's kind of a big spread, but they're worth a lot of money. Yeah. The stupidest thing I ever did, I traded a a, a sixty six Telly and an SG shaped Les Paul Junior for a mid sixties three thirty five twelve that had been cut down <laughs> to be a six. <laughs> oh yeah. man. Webb, okay. Well, a- Webb, it's been nice talking to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a 12 string. Wow. What were you well, thinking? Well, yeah. I mean, I, you know, when I lived in Austin, I, I didn't live there that long, but it, it was a huge thing in my life. And I lived there a couple of years in the 70s and I moved out there with a band. And uh, they had Guitar Resurrection, which was sort of like the drone of Austin. Yeah. Uh huh. And uh, pretty much my favorite guitar player in town was this guy named Johnny Richardson that played with this band called Mother of Pearl. And he didn't even, he was one of those guys, he was just great, and he didn't even own a guitar. He borrowed the 335 <laughs> from the bass player. Right. Well, Jimi Hendrix and did that. Ernie Gamage, and it was a great, it was an original .NET. And, uh, oh, wow. He, he just, so great, I'm like, I've got to have a 335. <laughs> yeah. And unfortunately... I would, you know, desperation is, is leads to some bad decisions. So yeah, I got this thing; it wasn't any good. Yeah, yeah. Well, sorry about that. Okay, so we may have a, a, a legal question here for you. Um, well, tell us about the uh, cherry red sunburst. That should be illegal on a Stratocaster, right? Yeah, that's that's uh, that's really uh, you're really asking for trouble if I'm sitting on the bench with one of those, you know, you, right. I'll, always, I'll throw you in there without parole, uh, you know, right. yeah. Cherry sunburst is a non fender finish, but fender, they obscure themselves. If they do that, it's awful. Right. It's like, I don't even really like it on Gibson, but that's a Gibson thing. Right. I mean, I like the darker, you know, and when the cherry maybe sometimes turns into a honey burst or something, but on a Gibson. the cherry sunburst on the Strat is awful. And of it course is. the original, two-tone sunburst is great and the original three-tone you know sunburst is great and i just recently found out when you know if it's the fender type i just recently found out that um you know in the 50s the sunbursts at fender were transparent but they were opaque in the 60s right, dan right. strange put right. up a good right. example of that yeah i like the transparent but yeah they did some scratch with the cherry sunburst they just to me look god awful yeah it's, it's yeah, it should be illegal. I think, shouldn't it? Yeah, I think you know sometimes people will get off with a warning, but uh, I, you know, if you own one of those, I would get rid of it quick because yeah. uh, in Congress right now they're debating on whether that should be a felony to own one. Or not. Yeah. Well, another another thing that I thought uh, that somebody asked me it was about. Uh, uh, well, my question was, should you be allowed to use a beer bottle to play slide guitar? And my, my answer was only if you're Danny Gatton. Yes. Well, and, and that's a good answer. Um, but, you know, the, in my personal life, what I always think about is uh, I was in this band in the early 80s in Mississippi called The Drapes. And uh, we were a pretty good band, actually. And, and the lead guitar player was uh, a Texan who's still out there. And he later really got into Bender, B Bender guitar, but Rick Casper Rawl. And uh, he would pick up a Beck's beer bottle and play slide with it, and it would always impress me. So <laughs> was, I don't he, know was he okay at it? Yeah, I thought so. He's a great player either way, wow. but I always thought he was good at it. Okay, so it's uh, so that's cool. Yeah, that's a merit based. That's a uh, okay. <laughs> yes. I think yeah. you're right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have to prove your yourself before right. you. 
right. allowed to do that. Okay, one other question I got from a guy was uh, he asked me if uh, Vince Gill's 1953 Telecaster uh, was a top loader. <laughs> well, that would be unheard of for that year model you know well I it would be a, highly uh, illegal too even later if you did that to that guitar oh i know i don't like them at all i, I yeah. owned one i don't like them but but they that i don't know they ever made one that way in 1953 yeah. That's a it wasn't they hadn't even thought about it yeah i've, I've tried to narrow that down because I, I had a 59 esquire that was that way it was a and top was, loader yeah, but there are some in 58, so I don't know if that means it was an early 59 or what, or they come both ways. You know, it's possible that early 58 is not top loader, and they went to it mid-year, and it spilled over into 59, and then they got rid of it. I don't really know. Well, it's but just a cost-cutting thing, I think. Yeah, I know, exactly. It's not, it's not, uh, it takes that oomph out of the low string, sure. particularly, yeah. Yeah. you know. I well, love string through string through guitars. I showed you my Flying V, you know, which is yeah. not a '58, but it's made like one. Mm -hmm. It's got the ferrules with the string through there. I really like that. Yeah, I used to buy uh, cheap Mexican top loaders and then drill holes in them. Well, you you believe it then? Yeah. yeah. You know, the guy that sort of uh, distinguished himself as a top loader guy is that guy uh, Jim Campolongo. He yeah. liked the heat though, and he liked it. Yeah. And yeah, you never say never. I mean, because no two guitars are alike. So maybe he got a good one, or maybe he just liked it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah hard to say. Got yeah. anything you want to add? Oh, I know what I want to add. Uh, web. Uh, you have a website, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Webwilder.com. Okay, so people can buy your uh, CDs and your movies and your T-shirts and whatever, right? The movies aren't there. That's sort of a long story. There is a live concert DVD, but all the albums are on CD, and the new one is even on vinyl, too. All right. And that's webwilder.com. Yeah. Yes, sir. Last of the full-grown men. Right. Thank wear, you. Wear glasses if you need them. That's right. Grow big. All right, Web. I the Brit Brothers, I appreciate you. Yeah, man, we'll be talking to you. All right. Good deal. We'll, right. we'll probably guys. be calling you every show if that's all right. Because <laughs> we How do get, we get a lot How of, well, we don't know. This, maybe this, this is, may be the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Well, that's fine. But you're on our inaugural right. show. so right. uh, And possibly our last show. So, <laughs> yeah. so we can blame it on you, Webb, if this all doesn't work out. I've closed a lot of menus, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, have a good one. We'll talk soon. You too. Thanks, guys. All right. Bye. Bye. Um, yeah. Is it legal? And then we want a lot of questions about uh, technical questions, or gear questions, uh, things like that, amp questions. We're getting ready right now to do a, a, a deal on amps, uh, amplifiers, and what we've used over the years and what we've whittled it down to uh, for today. We Things have been getting smaller yeah. amp-wise. As, as uh, we get older... Or well, but I th yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, when we were younger, we had to have big giant amps, you know, <laughs> big and loud. But big and loud. I don't know? like loud no, anymore. No, you can, you can't. Yeah, we do small amps yeah. now. So. Yeah, which is, you know, back here. Uh, and maybe you should show. How can you show them? These well, amps? we just get out of the way. Move this guitar. Uh, so this is uh, a '58 uh, Tweed. Fender Deluxe. Best one I've ever played to. It's amazing. Uh, I got that amp. I was playing with Pam Tillis, and uh, we had done a, we, we did sound check, and after sound check, the opening act was there, and the guy came up to me and said, man, you wouldn't know anybody looking for any old Fender amps, would you? And I said, well, yeah, me, because uh, he said, well, I got a couple of Deluxes. He's, he told me he had this tweed one and he had a brown one, and so he went home and got him. And I bought it from him. Uh, it's incredible. Uh, I've had several different speakers in it. Uh, I really am. I really like uh, Celestian Alnicos for tweed amps. Uh, this right now it has, I think, a ruby. Yeah, 
which is the latest Alnico that they've done. And it's a 35 watt speaker. Uh, I've tip, you know, tradition. The original speaker uh, was a Jensen Alnico, 15 watt speaker. Uh, blew it immediately. Uh, you know, within six months when I got the amp. Uh, this amp has so much low end that when you're playing, if your hand hits down here, which mine does, the speaker would just explode. Uh, so it's got a ruby in it now. Uh, I've had a I put a Celestian Blue in it and blew it. Uh, I've had a gold in it, which is great, 50 watt. Uh, I've had the cream in it, it's amazing. And then uh, this ruby, which I really like. Blackface uh, Princeton Reverb, that's a 66. Uh, another incredible amp. I like little amps. Uh, uh, I, I, I recently got a Tweed Vibralux, and it's a single 10 amp. I put a gold in that, 10 inch gold, and uh, it's, uh, it's amazing sounding. Uh, probably my favorite amp at the moment, but it is somewhere out with uh, Bob's gear. Uh, that's what I use when I play on the road. Um, and uh, just like little amps, that one over there is one of the uh, Bell & Howell projector amps. As you can see it just behind Tom's amp, or Tom's hand. Uh, and they're really cool sounding amps. They're 50s. It doesn't come like that. There's a guy I know and he he put, a, put them in cabinets, and uh, it's very similar to a Tweed Deluxe. Uh, and uh, that's about it for my choice of amps. I just like Fender amps for the most part. You yeah. Know, I, 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 it's like what I grew up playing, and uh, that's, I just know how to... It's what we first know, heard on the radio driving in the back seat of the car. Yeah, and I know how to get a good sound out of them. Yeah, I've uh, I've come back to I've gone this full circle and come back to small Fender amps. Yeah, um, I mean with Fogarty I played big you know Marshalls. Yeah, you got and to four twelves. Yeah, I know. but a lot of the times I, I mean, yeah, face I, it back a wall. Well, Leon, Leon was so loud, man. I, yeah. I had to use like a super reverb. Yeah, which I still have ringing in my ears from Leon. Remember when mom and dad came to hear us play with Leon and uh, dad said he's uh, been deaf ever since. <laughs> hey, did you like the show, dad? Huh? I can't hear it. <laughs> you guys and your electric guitars. Yeah. Oh, well, my choice of amps, actually, I've gone through the uh, run the gamut over the years and, and I've just gotten rid of all my big amps. I, my favorite of my, all of my big amps was I had a uh, 1963 Vox AC30 copper top with a top boost. Mm -hmm. It was uh, with the original Bulldog speakers in it. It was unbelievable, but it weighed like 90 pounds. Yeah. But I didn't have to cart it around. I had, we had crew members back then. So, you know, when you get off the road and, and it just sits in the house, I ended up getting rid of it. And, uh, uh, just been through tons of amps, big amps, playing on the uh, I, pl I was on the road, like I said, 18 years with Ben Skill, and he liked to play really loud. Uh, you know, he he could have his, he would have over 100 watts of uh, amplification for his guitar on stage at any time, and uh, it was hard to compete with. It's hard to find a big amp that sounds good, that, ma that matches what you want to play. Uh, and I wanted to always be able to just do soft stuff, but when you're on a giant stage like that, you can't do that. So mm -hmm. now I'm kind of grateful that I'm not doing those big tours anymore, and I'm just playing in bars around town and maybe a session here and there. Mm -hmm. And I can just take my, I, I use a Blues Junior, and I've had it modified, uh, tweaked by uh, Heim Amplification, Jeffrey Jeff Heim, here in Nashville. He's great. I highly recommend him. And he got the thing sounding great, and I don't, I don't even use distortion. I just turn around and I do my volumes and uh, get a little bit of overdrive and use the reverb on the amp, and that's about it. I got that a tuner and a tremolo. And that's what it's come down to after spending fifty grand over 
40 years, <laughs> I'm down to $399.95 <laughs> worth of gear. Well, uh, one amp sitting back here that I didn't talk about is the little Tweed uh, yeah. Pro Junior. Right. Which is, that's what I use. Which is a newer amp. It's a current right. production amp, yeah. That one's from, from the 90s. They've been around for a while. And, a, uh, and, and I that's what I use it's with... It's a printed uh, circuit board kind of deal. Though, yeah, right? that's what I use with Delbert. And yeah. I play, I take two of them out, and if we're playing... Indoors in smaller places, I'll use one, and uh, if we're outside, I'll use two of them. Right. You know, uh, just to fill it out. Well, they like 18 watts or something like that. They're if that. maybe 15, maybe the two EL84s. They're right. Probably. See, I like the way those tubes sound. I do too. Uh, the EH ones. Yeah, and you or know, no, no, no. JJ makes good. They make the good EL84. JJ six, does. Six v six is the EH. This is a good technical question uh -huh. right here. I do personally. I've, JJ's are great tubes. Uh, there, you can throw them on concrete, you know, and mm -hmm. and they just last forever. But only certain ones sound good to me, and those sound good to the me. The EL84s. The EL84s. Really but yeah. when it comes to six v sixes, I still like electro harmonics. Yeah. Yeah. EH. Uh, so. Uh, you know, which also uh, just Groove Tube makes two versions of six v sixes, and one of them. But they're still they're all Chinese made though, right? One of them is EH, and one of them is JJ. They just rebrand right. them. They test all them, right. Them. All right. and so I can't remember what the numbers are, but you can get an EH version of in a Groove Tube, and they're really good too. Yeah. So there's our tube theory. Yeah. Uh, preamp tubes. Preamp tubes. I like to find good old ones, you know, if you can, because they they last forever. And I have a huge box full of old tubes uh, that I've had for years and years. And uh, fortunately, I've bought up a fair amount, you know, over the years. Yeah, you know, Jeff Heim told me, uh, you know, like a lot of people buy these mods for their amps, like they buy these printed circuit board. Uh, uh, Fender amps, which sound great out of the box. And uh, uh, he says, don't waste your money on the mods, you, you know, uh, unless you're, you know, you live out in the middle of the country and that's all you got. But you can take it. I took it to Jeff and he just puts the amp on a scope and just manually does the mod by getting rid of these highs and lows that are kind of in your bug your ear mm -hmm. and you know it was like 125 bucks to have that done it's 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 a great idea yeah jeff worked for todd sharp yeah todd for, sharp's for another great guy here in town amazing uh, uh he has sharp a uh amplifiers he makes his own line of amps which yeah. are really They're great todd sharp okay. or is it just sharp i think it's, it's just sharp I mean, yeah anyway look into those amps everybody yeah. they're, they're pretty happening yeah Uh, who's the best country singer you ever uh, worked with? Terry McBride. Really? I think. You know, I don't. I don't know. There's so many great ones. Sean Camp. Sean's great. Sean's unbelievable. Sean's a great songwriter. Yeah, and singer. You know, and musician. You, you said singer, so. Uh, oh, singer. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've worked with uh, Loretta Lynn and. Uh, 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 George Jones, had him work with Tammy, worked with Dolly Parton. That's right. I uh, did a TV show with Dolly Parton and Ben Skill singing I Will Always Love You. <laughs> that was good. Uh, Dolly sings great, man. Yeah. You know. uh, who else? Uh, country, oh. Oh, Merle Haggard. I did a, a, a quick thing with Merle Haggard and, and the worst country music singer I ever sang or I've ever played for. <laughs> This is no shit. <laughs> I did a session with uh, Chris Christopherson. Oh. Out of Johnny uh, Cash's, yeah, Johnny, yeah. John Jr.'s. The Jr's. Cabin. Yeah, the cabin. Yeah. And uh, so uh, I'm uh, sitting in there with Chris Christopherson. Uh, it's just me and him. Uh, I'm playing acoustic guitar. And I said, well, what key do you want to do this song? And he goes, hell, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just sing on up to it. <laughs> yeah. <I'll> just, yeah. <laughs> so that was my Chris Christopherson story. Have you ever worked with Gilbert Donovan? No. <laughs> He's pretty good, though. You know. Who the hell's Gilbert Donovan? <laughs> exactly. 
Now, a lot of people who are watching this will know who Gilbert Donovan is, and, uh, and uh, we're all befuddled as to why he doesn't have a record deal. Yet. Really? Yeah. Is he actually good, or are you uh, yanking my chain? Well, I don't know. It's, it's your depends on your point of view. Okay. <laughs> you know, what kind of, what kind of singing you like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what went through your mind the first time you heard Gilbert Donovan? The windshield, I thought. <laughs> All right, you take the first part. Good time, Charlie's got the blues. Everybody's going away. You sing the next song. Said they're moving to LA. That's not bad, not bad. There's not a soul I know around. Got the blue. It's way too low. I'm sorry. It's just... <laughs> He's one of the singers I've ever heard. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, let's play something else, man. What do you want to play? I don't know. You're in the. Time for smoke. <laughs> well, I don't know. Where should we go from here? Did it just stop it? No. That just says. What time is it, boys? What time is it, boys? Oh, okay. It's guitar talk. <laughs> no. Here we go. Guitar talk. <laughs> All right. All right. We're still, folks, we're still trying to figure this shit yeah. out. Well, we're not going to want to talk again for a month after this. <laughs>